This video is all about the mean value of a function. We're very used to working out the mean from lower school maths, where we want to add up all the numbers together and then divide it by how many numbers there are. So that's demonstrated on the left hand side here, where we've got four different points and I want to work out their mean value. So I just add their sizes together and divide it by four. What about if we have a continuous function though? So rather than discrete individual points, we want to uh, sum the continuous values together. Well, we know that we can do that with an integral. That's the same as the sum. And in terms of dividing by the size of that interval, well, it's just the width of the interval, b minus a. So we have this formula that allows us to work out the mean of a function over an interval. So let's apply that to a couple of examples. So, first example, we want to find the mean value of f of x equals to 4 over root 2 plus 3x over the interval from 2 up to 6. So my formula is the integral from a to b of f of x divided by b minus a. So in this case, it's going to be the integral from 2 to 6 of 4 over root 2 plus 3x with respect to x. And we're going to divide by 6 minus 2. So dividing by 6 minus 2, dividing by 4. So instead of writing it like that, I could just have a 1 quarter at the front there. Which, while I'm at it, I notice if I take this one, this 4 outside the integral, they're going to cancel nicely to just leave me with 1. In order to integrate that, let me rewrite that as a power. So the square root on the bottom there will be a power of half. So I can rewrite that then as... 2 plus 3x to the power of minus 1 half. We can integrate that now. So we're going to have 2 plus 3x, add 1 to the power. So we're going to have a half there now. Minus a half plus 1 is a half. Divide by the new power. So dividing by a half is the same as timesing by 2. And then not forgetting by the reverse chain rule. I have to divide by 3 as well. Right, let's substitute our limits in. So substitute the 6 in. So 2 plus 3 times 6 to the power of a half. Minus 2 plus 3 times 2. So we've got two thirds of root 20 minus two thirds of root 8. Factorise the two thirds. Root 20 is the same thing as 2 root 5. Root 8 is the same thing as 2 root 2. So this whole thing becomes 4 thirds root 5 minus root 2. Second example, slightly more complicated now. Part A, show that the mean value of f of x over the integral from ln2 to ln6 is 4 ln9 over 7, all divided by ln3. Right, so let's write down the formula. So we're integrating from ln2 to ln6 of 4 over 1 plus e to the x with respect to x, all divided by ln6 minus ln2. Now, the denominator there, ln6 minus ln2, I know that's the same thing as ln6 over 2 by the laws of logarithms. So that's ln3. 
So I can replace all of that with a division of ln one over ln three. Now, in order to do this integration, I think we're going to need a substitution because that's too complicated at the moment. So I'm going to say let u equals e to the x. <coughs> Excuse me. So du by dx is equal to e to the x. <coughs> Excuse me. So then du over e to the x equals dx. And the e to the x, we know that that is u. So here is the key to my integration by substitution. We need to change the limits as well. So um, when x equals ln2, u equals e to the ln2, which is 2. When x equals ln6, u equals e to the ln6, which is 6. Right. Let's come to the integration then. So we've got 1 over ln3 of the integral from 2 to 6. Of 4 over 1 plus the e to the x is now a u. And then our dx is du over u. Okay. Well, we've got rid of the exponential now. But we've still got a quite awkward thing to do because basically we've got 4 over u times 1 plus u du. <coughs> I'm going to take that 4 outside the integral to make my life a little bit easier because the next stage of this is going to be partial fractions because I've got 1 over u times 1 plus u. So I would now do and I'm not going to do all of this now, but I would uh, rewrite this, just a quick reminder. Rewrite that as a over u plus b over 1 plus u. And uh, work it through, doing your partial fractions technique. Like I say, I'm not going to go through that now. Basically, you end up finding that it's the same as 1 over u minus... 1 over 1 plus u. So we're going to do that integral instead. Right. Let's get cracking with that then. So the first term... is going to integrate to be one uh, to be ln u the second term so we've got minus will be ln 1 plus u substituting uh, my limits in now ln6 minus ln7, so that's substituting the 6 in. Now substituting the 2 in, ln2 minus ln3. So ln6 minus ln7 minus ln2 plus ln3. Because the minus minus, that's why it's become a plus ln3. So using the laws of logarithms, I've got a plus ln6 and a plus ln3. So adding logarithms together means that I can multiply the insides. So that's going to give me ln18. 
and then I've got a minus ln7 and a minus ln2, which would combine together to be ln14, and I'm dividing by that 14. The 18 over 14 will simplify to be 9 over 7, so we get left with 4 ln 9 over 7 all over ln 3, which was what we needed to show. So that's part A done. Part B. Use your answer to part A to find the mean value of over the interval ln2 to ln6 of f of x plus 4. Now don't worry, this is not a brand new question. It's the same interval. The only difference is it's f of x plus 4. So let's have a think about what that would do to the mean value. What does the plus 4 do? Well, if I have f of x like this, f of x plus 4 is just 4 squares higher. The whole graph is just moved up 4. So all that would do then is just add 4 to the mean value. So it's just going to be 4 ln 9 over 7 over ln 3 plus 4. If every single data point moves 4 squares up, then the mean is going to move 4 squares up. Similarly, for part C, use geometric considerations, which is what we're doing here. We're not doing algebra, we're not doing calculus, we are just thinking about it graphically. Using geometric considerations, write down the mean value of minus f of x over the same interval. Well, all that minus does is reflect it in the x-axis. All of the positive values become negative, or the negative values become positive. So, all that will do is it will change my mean value to be minus 4 ln 9 over 7 divided by ln 3. 